The spring anime season is in full swing and we wrongly thought it was going to be a little on the light side. So it's time for a mid-season check-in. Kawaii Five. Hey, it's Kyle here, and yes, we're finally in the world of video starting this week. Yeah, this will be great. Nothing can possibly go wrong. But in all seriousness, our video schedule isn't planned just yet. We're going to drop these videos in between our Kawaii Fi Radio episodes, hopefully on a Friday. Kawaii Friday. If you're new to Kawaii Fi, we're an anime podcast and now anime YouTube channel. And you can find all the details for the podcast in the description below. Hit the subscribe button while you're at it. And if you're a current subscriber, well, hi. I like what you've done with your hair. Anyway, let's get stuck in. After the blockbuster 2021 winter season, we thought the spring anime season would be a little bit more relaxed. There were plenty of big returning series, such as My Hero Academia, Fruits Basket, Megalobox, and Zombieland Saga. Alongside them, there were a few hotly anticipated titles, like the supernatural drama To Your Eternity and rom-com teasing series Don't Toy Me, Miss Nagatoro. And there were a lot that were flying under the radar early on, and that's where we're looking. So if you didn't already have too much to watch, here's five more shows you might want to consider. Okay, let's start off with something a little bit odd, and by odd, I mean Odd Taxi. Odd Taxi's premise might not grab you straight away because it sounds a little strange. Taxi driver Otokawa, a walrus of a main character, is the center of an interweaving story connecting an idol group, a criminal monkey, a corrupt police meerkat, and a host of other wacky characters around the disappearance of a young girl. Its art style is fun and unusual, its soundtrack is well crafted, and the way it grounds its characters in its anthropomorphic version of Tokyo is really well done. But despite this cute and friendly look, Odd Taxi is a mystery anime with elements of crime, corruption, and a fair streak of darkness throughout it all. Now, just as a heads up, Odd Taxi is dialogue heavy, and it uses the exchanges Otakawa has with his customers to drive that narrative forward, with each customer peeling back a layer of the mystery and adding to the web of information. And don't worry, the story isn't set just in Otakawa's taxi, it's set in the open world most of the time, and on several occasions will have you wondering, what has this got to do with the plot, before reconnecting with the story later on. It might take a bit to hook you in, but each episode adds more layers to the story and every character has a role to play. It's a massive yarn ball of mystery that's slowly untangled through conversations, revealing more clues and more questions to the overall story. The way it's presented makes you feel involved in solving the mystery, instead of just being along for the ride, quite literally. If you're not a fan of stories which take a slow burn to get to their destination, this might not be for you. And with the heavy dialogue, it might also be off-putting seeing as there's no dub planned at this stage of May 2021. However, the vibe this anime gives off, along with that grooving OP, makes you want to sit and listen for a while. And if you check the reviews around the net, there's plenty of praise for this hidden gem. If you want to give Odd Taxi a shot, you can find it on Crunchyroll Worldwide. Alright, let's clear something up. Vivi Fluorite Eyes Song is not an idle anime. So if you were thinking of hitting that skip forward button, bear with me just a minute, and I'll tell you why this anime has very quickly become one of the biggest sleeper hits of the season. Vivi is one of those shows we weren't sure on when it was announced due to how little we knew about it. Most of us weren't sure if we were looking at an idle anime or a sci-fi series, and the initial artwork and synopsis are definitely to blame for that. But it turns out, Vivi is a beautifully executed sci-fi story, with flowing action scenes, a compelling script, and a story that spans a hundred years. It's an original anime penned by Nakatsuki Taipei, the creator of ReZero, and it's animated by Wit Studios. Yes, the folks who did Vinland Saga, Ancient Magus Bride, Great Pretender, and of course, the first three seasons of Attack on Titan. Now, there's maybe a few of you thinking, okay, this sounds a little bit more interesting where before you were considering skipping over. And I can't blame you. When the first fan art and synopsis for the series came out, it had a lot of people going, nah, this looks and sounds like an idle anime. So here's what Vivi's actually about. In the not-so-distant future, an advanced artificial intelligence starts wiping out human society. In a desperate last-ditch plan, a researcher sends a program back in time, hoping to change the course of history and prevent the war. 
This AI is named Matsumoto and has been tasked with making corrections to the timeline with the help of the first autonomous AI created and our protagonist, Diva, or as she's nicknamed by a young girl in episode one, Vivi. According to Matsumoto, there are several key moments over the next hundred years that need to be changed to stop the war from happening. So the pair team up, reluctantly in Vivi's case, to try and change the future. Now in Vivi, AIs are tasked with a single core drive, which serves as the cornerstone for their identity. Why you ask? Well, when the researchers tried to create an AI with multiple responsibilities, it ended up failing. Badly. So a single drive to their identity was decided upon. But this doesn't mean AIs can't learn or do other things. In Vivi's case, her core drive is to make people happy with her songs. And while music and singing is entwined throughout the story, it's not as front and center as it would be in an Idol series. The music ties in really well with the narrative and it's used to great effect in action scenes and to showcase major events. Throughout Vivi, you'll find elements of Ghost in a Shell, Appleseed, Ergo Proxy, and Violet Evergarden, all rolled into a nice, well-packaged story by Wit Studios. Wit Studios have really done the hard yards for this one, and it shows in every element of the production. The animation is fluid and crisp, fight scenes are smooth, beautifully choreographed, and every moment has weight to it. The audio mix is well balanced, the music, voiceover, and sound effects don't have to fight to be heard and don't overpower each other, unlike a certain blockbuster film. The overarching story is well written and so far at least, there's been no glaring potholes that pull you out of the viewing experience. And to top it off, the characters are believable growing and changing as time progresses alongside the world they live in. It's probably no surprise that Vivi's one of my favorite shows this season, and if you're looking for a new sci-fi to sink your teeth into, you can catch Vivi on Anime Lab, Funimation, Wackenim, and Annie Plus. Fans of Reverse Harems, Otome Games, and Pretty Boys, I've got a series for you. The Saints Magic Power is Omnipotent might not be the best title grammatically speaking, but it does have a fun story to share. Set in a world filled with magic, knights, monsters, princes, professors, kings, mages. Okay, look, it's got a lot of pretty boys in it and it's very self-aware of that fact. <laughs> This show is a reverse harem isekai, and it's refreshing to see a story from a female adult perspective as opposed to an edgy teenager or creepy old man. The story starts out similar to many isekai tales. Our workaholic main character, Takanashi Sei, returns home after a long day at work before some magical force summons her to another world. The kingdom of Salutania and its knights can no longer protect themselves from the monsters attacking their lands. So, they decide to summon a legendary saint to defeat them. But something went wrong with the summoning, and two saints have been summoned. Needing only one holy maiden, the other girl is declared the saint by Prince Kyle. And no, I'm not joking, his name is legit Prince Kyle. Kyle Denka desu wa? Sei has no way to get home from this new world, and she eventually stumbles upon the kingdom's potion and medical research institute. Deciding to make the most of her new fantasy life, she asks for permission to join the institute after showing an aptitude for crafting potions. The kingdom, thinking she was just a random extra, agrees. Sei throws herself into the world of potion and magic research, meeting a range of interesting characters and pretty men as she learns more about this new magical world and what she can do within it. Now, you can probably guess from the short-sighted decision made by a certain princely character how this story will likely play out, but that's for you to discover yourself. The series has a strong slice-of-life feel with dashes of romance and magic thrown in for good measure. It's been animated pretty beautifully by the folks at Diomedia, who produced Hundakun, Squid Girl, and A Hero no Sora, and it uses styles we're more used to seeing in a cinema, like depth of field and focus pulls. It's also got a nice colour palette that isn't going to blow your retinas out if you're watching late at night. And while there are several characters that come across as antagonistic or selfish, there is always two sides to the story, and it does a good job of showcasing this so far. So, if you're looking for a weekly dose of magic, pretty boys, and a shoujo-style isekai, The Saint's Magic Power is Omnipotent might just be the show you're after. You can catch it on Anime Lab, Annie Plus, Crunchyroll, Funimation, Muse Asia, and Wackenim. They really are quite pretty.
If you were looking for something a bit comfy this season and were disappointed there wasn't an equivalent of Yuru Camp, I might have the show for you. Dragon Goes House Hunting follows a red dragon called Letty, who, after being disowned by his parents for letting their egg get stolen, embarks on a journey to find a home for himself. After running into barbaric dwarves and heroes who are literal home wreckers, he's saved by Diria, a mysterious elf who's an architect and a real estate agent in this fantasy world. Together, they set out on a quest to find Letty the perfect home, with varying results. What makes this series enjoyable and fun is the characters. Letty might be the most cowardly dragon you've ever seen, but he comes across as a bright-eyed, optimistic teenager looking for his first rental for college. He's excitable and entertaining, and you can't wait to see where they'll end up next. The heroes are also a great laugh, as they're quite literally the villains of this story. The show loves to poke fun at how they're really just a bunch of criminals breaking and entering people's homes to attack them and steal their hard-earned belongings. And then there's Diria. You know from the get-go there is more than meets the eye to this powerful elf. While this is an adventure series, it's also a slice of life, and it strikes a great balance of keeping the story moving along while keeping the stakes low. No matter what happens, you know Letty will be fine. That's just the sort of show this is, leaving you to enjoy the characters and the silly situations they get themselves into each episode while they search for Letty's ideal home. The artwork is charming and it has a real video game vibe to it, something they enjoy pointing out as part of the world. The music fits the show really well and the OP in particular really embodies that happy adventure feeling, getting you ready for the show ahead and so far I've rarely skipped it. By no means is this show meant to compete with the other big shonen shows, but it does what it does very well. If you're looking for a good show to chill out to and that's not going to exhaust you, consider giving Dragon Ghost House Hunting a shot. You can find it on Anime Lab, Funimation, Wackanim and Netflix in some areas. The last show we're talking about is a bit of a heavy hitter when it comes to its themes. 86 is a gritty mech powered series set in a world at war with discrimination that harkens back to Nazi Germany in World War II. The Republic of San Magnolia is at war with the Gideon Empire, with the government claiming there has been no casualties thanks to their autonomous mechs. However, the truth is much more insidious. While the silver-haired citizens of the Republic's 85 sectors live safely within their protective walls, those with a different appearance are forced to fight in the war and pilot the juggernaut mechs. These pilots are referred to as the 86ers and are not considered human by the Republic. They're forced to fight against the Empire's autonomous mechs, being instructed remotely by a handler from inside the Republic. Our main character is Vladelina Malizi, a compassionate handler who believes the 86ers are human and the discrimination they face should be ended. She's assigned to be the handler of the Spearhead Squadron, considered the most successful squad of 86ers in the war. Spearhead is captained by Shinai Nozen, codenamed Undertaker and known for being the sole survivor of every squad he's been in. Now, if you're getting a bit of a Nazi Germany eugenics vibe, you're not wrong. The 86ers are treated in a very similar manner to the way the Jewish citizens of Germany were treated in the 1930s and 40s under Nazi Germany. The story doesn't shy away from these issues. It instead gets knee deep in the themes of war, racism and inequality. And the more you watch, the more you want to know how their world ended up like this. 86 is originally a light novel and it has a lot of well-written moments of powerful dialogue. Yes, there are moments that tug at your chest. Yes, there are times where cruel and horrible choices have to be made. And yes, characters will die. And that's part of the power of a well-written war story. If there's no losses or sacrifices, it wouldn't feel so genuine or grounded in reality. But let's take a step back and look at the show's production because while the story is important, it's only one aspect of the experience of anime. A1 Pictures is handling the adaptation and so far they've done a pretty good job. As you'd expect, the colours are vivid and the lighting is very well done, with plenty of camera style effects like bokeh, lens distortion and depth of field thrown in for good measure, something we're seeing more often in anime production. While the OP isn't going to be to everyone's taste, mine included, the rest of 86's soundtrack is worth noting. Unsurprisingly, it's done by Sony Music, and Sony proper owns A1 Pictures. The music's used sparingly and it elevates each moment when it's used, whether that's inter-character drama or a combat scene. So far, the series has had a good balance of combat and world building without doing too much of the exposition dance, and there's plenty of mystery to solve before we're done. If you've enjoyed war anime like Gundam, I Am Blooded Orphans or Aldnoa Zero, chances are you'll probably like 86. You can catch it worldwide on Crunchyroll and Annie Plus.
There's plenty of great anime to check out this season, and this list definitely isn't all there is. If you want a great and easy way to check out what anime is airing and where you can watch it, check out livechart.me. It's a website that lists all the anime per season and where you can watch them for each region. And what's your hidden gem for the season? We'd love to know, so put it in the comments section below. Everyone's got different tastes, and we'd love to know what stories you've been looking forward to every week. If you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, give us a thumbs up and consider hitting the subscribe button. We've got plenty more videos in the work, and most of them are outside of this studio. If you like, come and join our community on social media as well. We share anime news, memes, and videos whenever they pop up. A big thank you to our Patreon members who are helping to support these videos and our anime podcast, Kawaii Fi Radio. And welcome to our latest Kawaii Senpai, Tojoko. If you'd like to support us and get access to some behind the scenes content such as podcast outtakes and episode extras, you can head to the description below to find our Patreon link. We'd love to have you on board. And with that, I'm Kyle, and until next time, watch some anime.